All right, guys, welcome back to the Team Prep Stars podcast. I'm Big Rob. It's been a minute, but I'm here with my good friend, Amina Lai, and we also have two special guests with us. we got Roger Matthews from Jersey Shore. We've also got Sean from Sean Bond Fitness. Welcome to the show, guys. Thanks for coming Thank on. You. Thanks for coming on, guys. Yeah, appreciate you. Thank you. Okay, I mean, so let's be honest here. Did you ever watch Jersey Shore? Oh, yeah, man. Who didn't? Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? In Canada, I didn't just watch it. I lived it, man. In Can- like, I was probably the number really? one show in the world, I would say. Really? Okay. But it, but it, Honestly, honest, it, was, it, was, it was really popular here. Yeah. I mean, everywhere in the United States, it was really popular. Wait a minute. You're telling me that Canada's got guidos? Uh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got a lot of grenades. Whatever you want. I don't know if we're technically Italian or Guidos or whatever. I mean, I'm French, but I don't know, Roger. I think we'd give you guys a run for your money. I think we might make you guys look like Mickey Mouse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, I mean, hey, so speaking of Jersey Shore, so I mean, uh, can you fist pump? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, there, 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 okay. yeah, there, yeah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Okay. So yeah. here, I'm going to show you how to fist Listen. pump. And Roger, I'm going to show you. You guys could rate me on a scale of 1 to 10 how good right it is. On. Okay. So we would go to the club, whatever. We'd watch the show. We would actually watch the show, get pumped up, and then go to the club. Okay. Well, so I kind of figured, I'm like, so fist pump. Okay. So you got it. There's a couple of different ways of doing it, but this is the best way. So you got, you got to think about tricep extensions, right? So us being big meatheads, tricep extensions, you got to support it with this left arm because you might end up turning into a double fist pump. Okay. So you start off like this. You got to do the duck lips, right? You got to do the duck lips. Got it. You go like this. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh. It's like you're milking yeah. it. Like right. you're milking hey, how was yeah. that? Yeah, it was something different there, but it wasn't bad. <laughs> Not bad, eh? See, you saw the tricep now. So I like it. So it looks like you're milking a cow, but I guess you're in Canada, so it looks like you're, <laughs> looks like you're jerking off a moose because you're from Canada. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or some CrossFit if you had a, a dumbbell yeah. on each hand, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go back. And you watch all those old episodes I was on. I never fist bumped once, so. No, okay. Yeah. <laughs> never fist bumped it. We'll call that the moose jerk fist pump. Well, yeah. I have a question jerk. for you. Since <laughs> since I, 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 you know, this is an uh, opportunity to talk to somebody who's been on that show that's, that's very popular. How many people, I mean, it, w- it was kind of known that people were on gear, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that was kind of like the known thing. To me, uh, Jersey Shore was kind of like, uh, uh, like a... Uh, Almost my life when I was younger, to be honest with you. I mean, we, it was the same thing. We did all the same things, but now it became like a, a TV show. So what was the popular, like, steroid that was being used on average with the guys? Listen, I'm not going to say that I have any knowledge of steroids being in that house, but there were likely some steroids in that house. Um, I think it was just the basics, to be honest with you. I don't know. I never had an actual conversation about it, but I'm sure they were running – you know, DECA, um, tests, you know, some of those, some of the guys had the chipmunk cheeks, so maybe, maybe a little D ball in there. I don't know, but, uh, I never actually had a conversation, but there was definitely people that were running gear for sure. I and mean, the girls kind of talked about it. Like it was like, it was like a known thing that the guys were on juice. Listen, any guy that comes to the Jersey shore in the summertime, any guy, I don't care if you're what we call a Benny, which means you're not from the area. Or not. If you're coming down here, especially if you're like in the trendier clubs and you like the girls, you're running gear. Everybody's running gear. I, I, I think I think it's it's probably the most underrated substance that men use that are not it's not being talked about. Right. Like more people would talk about be open about vaping or something like that or even marijuana than they would be about about PEDs. I don't get it. You know, I mean, I. I you know, when I, I, I took steroids when I was 15 years old, it, it's, it's a long story, but for me, it was actually a good thing. It actually helped me in, in, in prolonging life. Now, I look at kids nowadays and I see they're, they're doing steroids. They're trying to, like, keep up with the trends. And it, it kind of like, oh, I, I wonder where did all this kind of go wrong, where that we're not talking about it and that you got kids that are, like, not using it correctly or abusing it or using it just because they think other guys are using it and they can give the advantage. Well, 
in my opinion, used to be a little more taboo than it is now. I mean, I can remember when I was younger watching after after school specials. You guys remember those? Actually, yeah. I don't know where you're from, I mean, but I don't know if you had that in Canada, but there was something called after school oh. specials. They all, they all had like a lesson to be learned. And I remember wa- watching one that was about steroids, this kid that was on steroids and how he I had issues and he was, you remember that, Sean? I remember it, yeah, very vividly. <laughs> you know what? I I, I I was born and raised in Virginia, and I don't remember that. Okay. But <laughs> yeah, well, it was, it was did, taboo. Did acne or something? It was kind of ingrained in your head that it's very taboo. You don't want to do it. And then, you know, then guys started being like Rich Piano, a guy that was very open about it, you know, talked yeah. about it. Made it a little more, I don't want to say mainstream, or but made it a little, made it a little more understood. Let's say that. And people began to become more comfortable talking about it and admitting that they do it. You know, if you're a Jersey guy from the Jersey Shore, where you're in this, I'm telling you, man, everybody's running in gears. Like Nick Diaz says, or Nate Diaz, everybody's on steroids. That's the way it is at the Jersey Shore, you know? You know, I mean, I think it's like that way. Like, like what do you think the percentage is in the gyms nowadays, in the, in the average gyms? I'm talking about, like, okay, let's say uh, – I guess Planet Fitness kind of took over since COVID. So the Planet Fitness type places, I think there's at least 40% of the guys are on on gear, I think, or something. That was the I, I think when you say the large chains like Crunch Fitness and more your hardcore gyms, it's probably higher. It's like 75%. Yeah, so, so, I would agree. So why, so why is it that it's why is it that it's not really being openly talked about? I still don't understand why it's not why it's still like in the taboo area. It doesn't make sense. Is it because of the needle? It doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, I don't know. But people talk about heroin all the time. Because the so. laws, the laws, because the law right. says it's illegal, right? So because it's what is Sean? What is it categorized as? What what? Schedule. Uh, it's a schedule three. Three here. Yeah. Schedule, schedule three. Well, I think yeah. that that has a that, that has that has a you know a big part of the taboo so, factor. So I don't so know if you guys know three. this. I don't know if you guys know this, but actually in Canada, so our our steroid laws um, are very lax. So the Canadians, yeah. we call this a bit of a gray area. It's actually a schedule four drug here in Canada, which means, um, you know, it's, you can't, if you have it on you for, and it's not for the purpose of trafficking, um, there's nothing illegal about having it on you for your personal use. So, and, um, and so in, in, in America, steroids went through this really weird change where it was actually not classified, where it wasn't even on the scheduling list. And then all of a sudden, because of the Olympics and, you know, the people showing up dirty, the world's fastest runner, uh, you know, and then it all of a sudden became class three. It, and, and there was really no there was no reason for it. It was it was all political. It had nothing to do with the fact that it was an addiction potential or anything like that. Class four in America is a drug like a Xanax or Ambien or something like that. Class three in America is a drug. Um, hmm. What's class three? Vicodin used to be class three, but now it's class two. So all opiates are class two. I guess what is that yeah. one? Um, that that fake opiate? What's that? Um, everyone's addicted to tramadol that must be schedule three i thought like steroids are right there with cocaine i thought well Here cocaine is schedule two is that schedule um, two technically there's a medical use for cocaine and they actually do use cocaine i actually i had a, a nose surgery believe it or not when i was younger and they use cocaine pharmaceutical cocaine it was yeah. a blue like a uh, sponge that they shoved up my nose and it made my whole face numb uh, <laughs> that was before i actually tried it recreationally uh this is when i was when i was really young i actually tried it recreationally later and it was quite n- nowhere near as good as the pharmaceutical but it was quite the same thing the whole face went numb but but schedule one in america is heroin whereas in europe heroin is used like morphine is used in america so right. in you know in in europe it's it is there is a medical purpose for it so our scheduling like marijuana is in schedule one and and cocaine is in schedule two that makes no sense that marijuana uh-huh. is more dangerous than cocaine or Wait steroids. A marijuana is a schedule one here in the States, even now? It, it still is federally, yeah. Oh, federally, so right, yeah. State, state, yeah. yeah state, states are overdoing it, and, and but we haven't seen the federal change yet, and that's what needs to be done. Honestly, with steroids, too, if you're going to think about it realistically, I mean, there is really – the abuse potential with steroids has to do more with the psychology of the person using them. Would you guys agree? Yeah, I, agree. I would agree with that. Yeah. Anybody can, anyone can abuse anything. 
Um, you know, we, we, we've seen people, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know if Rich Piana necessarily died from steroids. I don't want to talk about anybody else's recent death, yeah. but, but Rich Piana, who, who may have or may not have died from steroids, you know, we could see that on his body, he was obviously taking too much. You know what I mean? So at some point, you have to say, okay, rationally, I don't know about you guys, but for me, 250 pounds is bad no matter what you are, it, it, even if it's muscle. I mean, we're seeing that now. It's affecting the heart. So, you know, at, at some degree, you know, bodybuilders, they don't back off like they used to. They used, yeah, to, yeah, they yeah. used to, like, go, go hard like and I, then back off. I, I, I always tell everybody, you're more healthy being 250 pounds obese with fat than 250 pounds of all muscle because when you have muscle tissue, you have to pump more blood through the muscle, which blood doesn't yeah. pump through fat. So your heart's working twice as hard. It's, it's really it's really hard being in the area of fitness when, when it's like, in general, it's kind of like a gray thing, you know, where it's like it, you don't want to be obsessed with being healthy because then you, you're you're an addict, supposedly. But right. but but being healthy should be something that should be promoted. And it's not. Well, you know what? We've talked about this in the past. I mean, I think so. I mean. You know, people are definitely talking about their their steroid use a little bit more now. But I do agree with what you're saying. Like, uh, it's still there is the stigma around it that it's like, you know, we're all bodybuilders are painted with the same brush. You know, they're meatheads, they're they roid rage, this and that, whatever. <laughs> a bodybuilder dies, and they're automatically, oh, it's steroids, it's steroids. It's like, well, no, it was. Right. You know, you know, Rich Piana, for example, you were talking about him. Um, we don't really know what happened, but I do we know don't that know. Rich Piana. He, he came out and he said he, he, he started dabbling with recreational drugs. And I don't yeah. care what you're taking. If you're taking steroids, you're taking recreational drugs, you're mixing the two. I mean, these are two lifestyles that should not be mixed together. I mean, if you're, um, you're a big guy, you're, 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 you're a professional bodybuilder and you're partying, I mean, you're, you're going to run into problems. Even if you're partying like that, you're going to run into problems. I had just watched an interview with someone uh, on another podcast saying that they think Rich died from uh, collagen breaking off into the bloodstream is what they were saying. Yeah, I saw that. Oh, but you know, you know, who, who knows? You know, listen, and then let, 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 let's, while we're on the subject of this, um, Dallas McCarver's high test levels could be because he took an injection that day and it, the actual raw testosterone seeped into his bloodstream. And that's what they got later. I know, I don't think it's like, you know, cause you're dead. So your heart's not pumping anymore. So right. your 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 readings might not be accurate. I also think there's really a high. significant difference between taking an enhancing drug, a muscle enhancing drug, between say uh, uh, a Rich Piana and uh, a Lance Armstrong. There's a difference there, you know. Like like one guy is taking it because he wants to be he wants to compete at the highest level and be a bodybuilder, which is what it's really for. And someone like Lance Armstrong, who has an unfair advantage. And cycling against guys that aren't taking, I think there's a there's a difference there, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like a fighter, also. Or a fighter. So, so, so there is a diff. I agree 100 percent that there is a difference, but is it is it that we're rationalizing and justifying? Are we? I mean, I just want to throw that out there. I mean, I, I take these stuff. I, I take what this you stuff mean. too. So I feel like know. if every if everybody's on it, it's 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 fine. But you know, if, that's, if you're, that's, that's what I think. Yeah. Well, that's, See, but, but, but that's but the, the problem. Everybody's not saying they're on it. Everybody's you're on that, but, that's up. But I say this all the time. If there was a steroid league baseball and there was a non-steroid league baseball, I tune in to watch the steroid league all day long. Yeah, yeah. Everybody would. Mark you know, McGuire, McGuire cranking home runs over, you know, over the wall is what I want to yeah. see, you know? Yeah. yeah. But people think I mean, that it's just unhealthy. You know, I mean, people don't understand. You brought it up. You brought up Lance Armstrong, and, and you know Lance Armstrong tested positive, but so did like the seven other people behind him. Yeah. I mean, the whole the whole the whole team was dirty. But the so, media made the media made an example out of him. Right. Yeah, and that's not right. And that, yeah. that's you, the, the, the media is just a shit all in general. The Sorry, the whole bleep, 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 bleep that out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And the media is involved. You don't know what to believe. <laughs> you just yeah. don't know what to believe. The media is man. But when you the get back to the, the roid rage, this is what I've always told people. I really don't believe in roid rage, um, with the exception of maybe Tremblone. I think that you have a guy who feels invincible, who may already be a jerk, 
It's just going to make him more of a jerk. I don't believe in actually it's physically making you rage and you're going nuts. 100%. I just don't. That's true. I think it's the person, the person behind the. the not, not according to the after school special I watched, but I told oh, you. I'm yeah. scared, scared of that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> hey, but you know what? Both you guys saw that after school special and yet you still decided to, to, to take stuff. It did. It must have not done any good, right? <laughs> my story. My story is simple, man. I grew up in a little town of Maine. I watch shows like that. I come from a pretty conservative family. You know, I'm sort of the black sheep of the family. Nobody's really got tattoos or, you know, Me too. Same thing. they're all, you know, church going, God fearing people. And then I moved to New Jersey, and I saw a, a massive change in the quality of girls, and I wanted that <laughs> quality of girl. And yeah. I saw who those girls were attracted to. And they weren't right. attracted to the guy that came down from Maine that was wearing, you know, suspenders and skinny arms. And I was I was tall. I was six foot four, probably weighed 190 pounds. And I saw the 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 guys that were taking these chicks home. And I said, I'm gonna get in the fucking gym. So I joined the gym and then you talk to people <laughs> and you learned how you know you can progress a little quicker, you know. I, I hate these idiots out there that think you take steroids and sit on the couch, you know what I mean? No. I, fucking, I hate those people. But you know, there is a way to progress a little quicker. Um, recover quicker and and that way is steroids. So, you know, in my early 20s, I began that journey um, sort of blindly. I wish I knew better. I wish I knew about getting blood work done and things like that, but uh, sort of jumped into it and you just kind of learn. You know, back then it was more taboo. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, I'm 46 now. Were, were, you, were you using UGL stuff or were you using pharma shit back then? Back then, pharma shit. It would have been pharma back thought. then, right? Yeah, yeah, because back then I, I remember when when Jersey Shore was out and I everything was farmer then you oh, that was way before hit. Shore, way you had you had I think Quality Vet was around right yep. that was the only that was the only thing that wasn't like from the pharmacy right yep. right from best of my rock collection yeah and and well, Dencal maybe Dencal and Quality Vet. Mexico, yeah, it came from Mexico. Yeah, late 90s so was like a huge explosion of like veterinarian drugs from Mexico. From Mexico, yeah, those guys all got busted from American DEA. The Amer- America went down there and got them, believe it or not. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was an operation. I forget what it was called, but it had something to do with steroids. But yeah, but yeah, but that but that was the end of all the quality drugs, if you ask yeah. me. Yeah. You would have seen that the quality has significantly gone down, right? I mean, well, look, look, look you, you, your first cycle, how many milligrams of test? I'm, I'm assuming it's test. What did you take your first cycle? Oh, God, I honestly, I don't even remember. Probably two a week, probably. I don't remember. Two cc's a week? I mean, yeah, yeah that's like, like my first cycle was one cc a week, but I was really young. But regardless of that, nowadays, you know, people are starting off at, that's that's not even, people start off at five, six hundred. That's great. Yeah. They start with. Man, it's got people in meat are taking 1,200 a week for yeah. starting off, you know, and they don't even, and here's the thing, they don't even look like they, they hardly even work out, and this goes back to what we were talking about before, you know, the, the focus has shifted entirely on the drugs now, as opposed to diet, training, working hard, and then using these products as a tool, because that's essentially what they are. I always compare it to construction, so let's say yeah. someone that's, you know, uh, you're your tradesman, you're building a house, okay? You know, you're, you're by yourself. This We'll call this natural. You're building the house by yourself. Well, now you add in a couple of products. Now what you've done is now you've got power tools instead of a hammer and a nail. you got power tools and you've got extra people working with you, okay? Right. You've got more sets of hands. Now, if you guys are just going to sit on coffee break all day and do nothing, well, what, what good are these tools? They're not doing anything, right? Yeah. So yeah. that's the whole idea is that, you know what, you should be using them uh, properly and you should still be busting your ass in the gym following a strict diet and working yeah. hard. Yeah, I agree. You know, the funny thing is, is that you're right. The focus is all on drugs, but the drugs are all shit. I mean, that's the problem. I mean, you know, if it, if it was like it used to be, people probably wouldn't be focused on the drugs. Literally, I mean, it wouldn't take, it didn't take that much. But I think, yeah. I think in general, I mean, and, and I want your opinion on this. And I honestly think and you're, you're, the, you're the trainer. So I'm asking you. Don't you think that when you train to that level of failure, the human body isn't really just made, is it made to recover and then re- work out like that again the next day? Like, I mean, like, it seems, it seems like bodybuilding goes together like peanut butter and jelly. Like it just, steroids, it like belongs in building muscle. Like it, it needs to be there. Like it should be there. I don't know why, like it, 
people say it's like I don't I don't think lifting weights and bodybuilding is actually healthy without steroids. Believe it or not, I mean that's just my opinion. But I think I think when you break your down down muscle to that degree, and you're training as hard as some of the you know people train, and you don't have something to recover, I think you're doing worse off than if you did have something. I think yeah, and things in moderation. I think um, yeah, I, I'm not gonna disagree with you on that. You know what? You no, know, you know what? You know what I mean. Here's the thing: is you know there will never just be uh, yeah. There's natural shows. There's there's tested shows. Um, they're not always the best because there are ways around these tests. But at the same breath, I mean, it, without steroids, there really is no bodybuilding because unless you're just one of those few genetic freaks, I mean, your body is just not gonna grow, right? I, I don't I don't see it's possible. I, th- I think it's actually worse. I think your liver enzymes get, en- end up being worse from all the broken down dead blood cells in your body and not being able to recover. But you know that it, again, it depends on how you train, right? I mean, I'm sure you train a lot of people that don't go to failure, that get great results working out four or five times a week, and 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 they do good just with good nutrition, right? I push all my clients to failure. <laughs> You push all your see that so I mean I so you push all your so 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 your your their nutrition must be like really really on it or else they're not gonna yeah yeah are well, you on just supplements? Look at your Instagram there, Sean, and you guys had uh, there's a transformation that you posted with, with one of your clients. Oh Sam. Yeah Sam. So Sam he ended up dropping a lot of weight, and I can tell that's through hard work, proper diet, and proper training, and that's great. That's what it's all about. Right. I I stick on him daily. I mean, I can't be in his kitchen, but I, I you know, if I could be sure. a fly, I'd like to be. For example, they got this guy at the gym. I'm going to call him the cowboy. He, so he comes in with this cowboy hat, <laughs> this big mullet. I got to use this guy as an example, though, because I've been watching him for almost two years in the gym, and he puts in the work. I mean, he busts <laughs> his ass, screams, grunts, goes as heavy as possible every single workout, but his physique never changes. Okay, so... Uh... And in the last six months, I've noticed major breakouts on his back. So he's got tons of pimples. So I know he's doing something, but his physique's just not changing. So I'm just like, I need to be, see what this, what's this guy doing when he gets home? You know, is he, is he not eating? I, I don't know what the missing link there or to why he's not getting any kind of results. Because he does put it in the work and we obviously know he's doing some stuff, which may be out of somebody's bathtub, but. I mean, I've seen a lot of people like that, too, and I always wonder myself, is it genetics? Because I always thought, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I always thought if you if you take real shit and you eat good, I mean, even even just adding one or two more meals or a shake and a meal, you're going to grow. You're going to make changes. Like, am, am yeah. I wrong? Or I mean, I, or, yeah. I feel like your protein should be about one uh, one gram per pound of body weight. And yeah. uh I don't feel like you need more than that. You have people say two grams, but you don't need more than that. It's a bit over. Two is it's just overkill, right? That's overkill. Yeah. So, you know, let, guys, let, let's talk about the protein debate while we're all here. We got we got a good good mind. Let's talk about the protein debate. I honestly think that one gram per pound is fine, but I also understand that people that are on diets like a carnivore diet or so forth, they're going to end up getting a lot more than that. And it doesn't seem like that's unhealthy for them either. So, what is really like is there really a, does it really matter honestly does it really matter as long as you're getting one gram at least one gram does it matter yeah I, I you know one of the guys the first guys that ever taught me body we're going back to the 90s he said anything beats a blank just eat he goes people think too much about all this just eat well he said anything beats a blank so step one you're probably well right. you know what i don't typically like with my clients i don't typically calculate macros i mean i know you don't either um, no, a lot of people that do, I mean, if anything, um, I'll, I'll calculate protein a little bit. So, for example, Roger. So, I just made a program for Roger. I made him uh, a meal plan, a training program. Um, you know, Roger's meal plan. There you go. Right there, there it is. Yeah. So, nice. for Roger. So, Roger, he's around 250 pounds, right? I, I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, gonna make 40, his, I'm going to say 248 pounds. You had a whole conversation before about how no body can can withstand 250 pounds of mass without their heart working over time and diet. So right. That was with clothes. That was with clothes. That was with clothes. So when I was making Roger's program, I, I got some stats from him or whatever. 
Um, well, like, so I went, he's, he's sitting at around 250 grams of protein on his diet. Now, if I were to give him 500, like, I'm sorry, but that's excessive. Success. You want, if, if, if you did that, give him 500, you'd have to take away from something else. Yeah. Well, yeah and I you mean, know what? So here's the thing. What's he going to have? He's going to have 16 ounces of chicken breast at a meal. That right. doesn't make any sense. Is he going to have so, four so, scoops of protein? That's, that's, so, that's overkill. No. Yeah, you're right. A hundred percent. And I actually only do this. I only do something like that during the car depletion phase. I think that it's very yes. unhealthy. And I think that I think if you do it, and this is the thing, a lot of people took carb depletion and they thought they could just manipulate it into their diet. And so right. they're like carb depleting on a regular and, and like that became keto. So keto became accepted. Like all the things that should not be accepted are accepted. And unfortunately, the one thing that should be accepted, which is, you know, the moderate use of PEDs is not. And that's a shame. It really is. Because, I mean, let's 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 be honest. You know, you got. You've got people out there that really are eating shit. They're just, they just don't know how to eat whatsoever. And yeah. they're training hard like this one guy, probably why he got the acne. I mean, it could be from bad food because he just doesn't know any better, you know? Right. And, it, and, then, and then we're stigmatizing the people that, that actually are healthy and look good and use PEDs. Because if you use PEDs correctly, whether it's TRT, if you're older man, Listen, I mean, listen, we don't have Premobolin in America, but listen, Premobolin is one of the best steroids ever made. I mean, honestly, I mean, you just to take that and a little bit of testosterone when you're older, it can make it can make a life changing difference to your recovery and your your libido and everything. I, I agree with we, that. We should all we should all have access to that, especially if we're doing all the other things properly, like we're eating right and we're training right. Yeah, what I you, always tell everyone. What, do, what is ahead. your on on you know routine blood work do you think that should be advised if you're taking PEDs? absolutely yeah you know, no, a- here, here's 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 my opinion on blood work i think blood work reflects what you are when you take the test so if you want to know if you're if, if you're on peds and if they're damaging you honestly you should take the test while you're on it right yeah, I mean, for sure. find out find out whether or not your body is tolerating it well. And your liver you know, whether you're, are going to be above the normal range just simply because just you're on well, it, which alarms the doctor training. usually, and they Even tell that, you, you know, you got to go see a specialist. But I think there's acceptable ranges, right? I mean, I, I'm asking a me. So here. there's so there's two different there's well, you two know different guys, things sir, we look you know for. What, Sean, we can't really see if you just want to go down a little bit. He's good at that. Perfect. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, now I can see how big you are. Shots okay. fired. All right. So throw a yeah, bicep in now. there. Let's see what you got. Oh, oh shit. Look at that. Look at oh, that. Shit. The tats. I don't care about standing. two things. My nice. peaks and my peaks. That's yeah. right. There I got go. nice peaks. I know what you mean. Yeah. And I actually <laughs> seen you guys in that video, that uh, polar bear challenge. Um, You guys, uh, you're ripped there, Sean. I'm yeah. Yeah. You look great, too. Feeling. What's the polar bear challenge? I, I want to, tell me what the polar bear challenge. I want to know. I want to hear what this is. You go so it's, a, it's a it's an annual thing they do here every year at the Jersey Shore to raise money for Special Olympics, and it's basically you sign up, you have to donate a certain amount of money. Businesses can get involved to, in in it too, and uh, you go jump in the Atlantic Ocean, which is about forty degrees, and you do it as a group. You know, people dress up, wear tutus, yeah. and they make a whole thing of it, but it raises a lot of money. Like this year, we raised one point eight million dollars for Special Olympics. So, oh, that's great, man. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it goes to a great cause, right? So, yeah, absolutely. You 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 don't you don't uh, talk to your clients about PEDs, do you? Who me? Yeah, I don't have a client, John. <laughs> no, I know I know I know you don't. I'm, I'm asking you. I'm asking you. <laughs> no, but Sean said, "Who me? I don't have clients." <laughs> well, I didn't exactly, right? I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? Here's what it is. This year, uh, you know what? I'll answer it first, and maybe Sean will answer. Uh, it depends on the client. I mean, if a client exactly. comes to me saying, "Hey, you know what? This is what I'm," t-, you know, it, it just depends, right? Um, I never would force a client to take something or encourage it. It's, it's no, them it's coming not. to me saying, "Hey, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm taking," right. and it's like, "Okay, I'll." I'll go, okay, you know what? You're doing this completely wrong. I need you to get blood work. 
Um, you're taking way too much of it. Let's get you off. Let's do this, that, whatever. So uh, in short, it just depends on the client. It depends on the client. Yeah, the age of the client, uh, the goals of the client is all going to determine what kind of regimen I'm going to uh, suggest to them. A lot of times people come to you and they're already in such bad shape, meaning that they, they and what I mean by that is, is it doesn't mean what they look like. It means they're already buying stuff from a su supplier, from a source, and the source is, you know, shoddy. We don't know if it's good or if it's not. So if the person's asking you for advice and they're telling you, you know, well, I'm, I'm taking, you know, 600 milligrams of test and, you know, 400 milligrams of EQ. How do you know? See, when when it was Jersey Shore, everything was pharmaceutical. So if you had EQ, it came in a 50 cc bottle. Yes, it was it from Fort Dodge. It was it was, it was it was Equigain. It was Solve. It was Squib. I you we know. I know. You know. I know. And yeah. and if you had if you had real Decaduraballin, it came in a glass syringe. Yes, it you did. remember. That's yep. right. You remember. Apple, yeah. Yeah. Apple, about the brand. The, those two. Those two. You had those. You yeah. had those two. And but the. the the, the phased out, the last ones were, were from Mexico with the glass syringes for actual decadurabolin. And and you're right, there were there was there was some decadurabolin that was in amps. There was, but more often than not, it was natural and decanoate, right? Yes. Now, now natural and decanoate is the generic for decadurabolin. Correct? Yes. Correct. But for some but for some reason, 50 milligrams of decadurabolin works like magic. And 200 milligrams of natural and decanoate does not do the same thing. And you can't right. tell somebody. You can't tell someone. You, they just don't know. Like you try to explain to someone, they, they tell you, oh, I'm on this, this, and this. And I'm looking at them like, no, you're not. Right. You think, you, you think you're only on test. I can tell. I can see it that you're only on test. Because if you were on the following other drugs, you would look crazy. Right. You would look crazy, you know? I mean, you tell me somebody that isn't on real eq real eq that's that's 50 milligrams per ml eq right not baldenone this 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 200 300 milligram that's not real i don't know what the hell it is but it's not the same thing as that 50 mill you know that 50 milligram stuff in that 50 cc bottle if you took two cc's three times a week you got huge yeah. huge and you got so strong your bench would go up 100 pounds in like eight weeks you know, right. I mean, it, it, if you've never taken anything before, for sure, you know, you right. know Real so while, while we're talking about supplements here, guys, let's kind of flip the conversation the other way in terms of over the counter supplements. So for for the sake of the, the, the podcast, I know what you guys are up to. But Roger, Sean, why don't you guys dive into this venture you guys have embarked on? OK, well, I'll, let, I'll let you go ahead since this really started out as your baby like three years ago. Right. Well, I've been uh, in the fitness industry and, and, and training bodybuilding uh, since prior around 1998. Um, so, and we go back even to the anabolics. I remember picking up the 1996 anabolic review and memorizing it front to back. My mother was in pharmaceuticals, yeah. so it was always something that interested me. And, and using the, the old fat burners and thermogenics from the late 90s were just totally different than what we have now. Though a lot of, right. like Roger said, a lot of stuff is banned now but some of the stuff is still not banned and they were just more affected. You would sweat when you took them and you, you know, you, you get real results. So probably about five years ago, I wanted to create a thermogenic because I'm always, you know, trying to stay lean and I go through different phases. I want to create a thermogenic that really mimicked that effect from the late nineties. You know, the way it made you feel the focus and the drive. And that's basically what I did. I just, you know, got with different companies and different people in the industry and just, got the ingredients together and, and wanted to create a, a thermogenic that mimicked that feeling that you got in the late 90s, but all in one capsule. That was the important thing to me because I know with all, pretty much every thermogenic out there, they're going to be a proprietary blend, most of all, and okay. they're going to have you taken anywhere with between. Full transparency on ingredients is a key part of that. That's yeah. what interested me. And you see how all these customers come to us with these different products. They think they're taking these certain ingredients and they're not. And it's really yeah. sad that these consumers are so misled. Um, but you're, they're taking two to four, six capsules a day just to reach whatever that says on that bottle. And I wanted to steer away from that. I wanted one capsule and I wanted to max out with the lab what we could do with just one capsule and, and give it that real thermogenic effect. So that's when it we... Meets, 
it's great that you're making something that works. Because right. nowadays, nowadays, everything out there just doesn't work. It's all just it's gar- marketing. I'm not it's being all mean. It's garbage. It's garbage. It is. Well, here's and the, you know, the part about the fat burner that I like. So for everyone watching, what it is, it's a, it's a multi-ingredient rapid fat burning product. Um, the multi-ingredients seem to have a synergistic effect on each other. And it just, it, it rapidly will burn fat. But also what I like about this fat burning product is that it makes you feel good. It gives you a sense of well-being and a boost of energy. Yes. If you've taken this product, you will know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I take my thermogenic, I mean, my thermo one every single morning. And like, even when I got out this morning, like when I woke up this morning, I was really dragging. I was not in the mood to get up. But as soon as I take my thermo one and in about 30 minutes, life is just totally different. And I mean that, like, it's like you are ready to conquer the day and you're in a great mood and positivity and. Your sense of motivation goes through the roof. It absolutely What do you say as Roger? Motivation what do you recommend? Like in, a, in a capsule. Well, what do you recommend as far as people take one once a day or twice a day? Once just a day. one. Yeah, just one. Just I've got it where it lasts up to eight hours. It really does. That's, that's the, perfect because you don't want you don't want to interfere with the sleep. You know that that's why it's it's perfect that it it's and I have out just number right. one in the evening, say three or four o'clock, and it does. It I have a hard time going to sleep, <laughs> even if I'm going to bed at midnight. You know, one o'clock, I'm still feeling that for some reason. Yeah, we'll, we'll put the link into that. Yeah. Yeah, so for anyone watching the podcast, if you're interested in this product, all all in the description will have the website, the contact information, the Instagram for the Thermo One fat burning product. You guys can get in touch with them um, through the contact information there. We're also going to be Team Prep Stars is partnering up with the Thermo One fat burner, and we're going to be sharing a, a free protocol meal plan and workout plan that you guys can follow along if you'd like. It'll be on their Instagram and our Instagram. I think it's also important to mention that recently uh, we actually came out with a femme version, uh, catering to women, obviously, mostly because the 300 milligrams of caffeine was uh, could be a little much, could be a little overstimulating for some women. We still have some women clients that love it. Um, so we toned it down a little bit. It's got 200 milligrams of caffeine in it. But we also added uh, Capsomax as an appetite suppressant and um, hyaluronic acid, which is, you know, there's a lot of studies done on that. It's really great for skin. Obviously, skincare is big to women these days, so uh, we we certainly try to cater our newest product, which we're yeah. calling Thermal Fem, to the women's market, and it has done exceptionally well. So, but not limited but, to the women's market because it could be used for men too. Correct, correct. Um, especially especially men that are sensitive to caffeine. Like exactly, me. absolutely. Exactly. So we don't want we don't want guys like me who are taking this stuff, th- taking the Fem version, thinking that you know oh. You know, I'm taking the girly fat burner. No, it works just as good as the other one. But if you're sensitive, <laughs> like me, you know, yeah, then or then you know you what, might even not... taking that version, you might even take it two doses in a day, right? I, yeah, I I feel like with the fam, you could probably get away with taking it twice. Yeah, yeah. You know, everyone's different. When I, one thing I realize different. when it comes to stimulants, everyone's different. Everyone reacts yeah, differently. Their bodies respond different. differently. Yeah. But for everybody out there, just start with one. Don't don't be stupid and 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 try to think you know three whatever. Don't three oh, no, anything. No. Just do one, one. And we still have yeah. we still have customers that say, "Can I still drink my energy drink or my coffee in the morning?" And we're like, "Please don't do that." <laughs> no. Yeah. And don't combine this with anything else. Exactly. Don't this combine this with anything else. Just take this by itself. And then, and then after you've, you know, gotten used to it, if you want to add coffee or something else, that's, that's your prerogative. Yeah, correct. Exactly. Go ahead. Go ahead, Roger. No, I was going to say, that's, that's exactly right. That's exactly what we advise our clients. Take it in the morning, first thing in the morning to start your day, rather than drinking your coffee. If you happen to find it overstimulating because everybody does metabolize things differently, that includes food, that includes anything that you, you take into your body. Um, we recommend just taking it with food if you find yourself overstimulated, you know, so. Your body will get used to it. We have not found that to be the case. All of our feedback has been super positive. Yeah. We're very transparent with it. You know, you go on Thermo One uh, Fat Burner on Instagram. You can go on our uh, website. You can see all the reviews. Um, you know, we take pride in that. That's a big part of what we're proud of yeah. is transparency. We break down the milligrams of every ingredient to the exact milligram. We work very closely with the lab. We think that's what separates us from from a lot of the companies out there. Our, our taboo word in our business is proprietary blend. We don't like that word. So. It's horrible. Horrible. It's nothing but fillers. It's right. 
Yeah, they put something up there and then they say proprietary blend. It's all bullshit. We we had a customer yesterday who said, I'm taking, uh, what was it, 300 or 453 453 milligrams of caffeine. I was like, how can you be taking 453 milligrams of caffeine in one serving? And then she sent me the directions and it was a proprietary blend. 453 milligrams total of the proprietary blend. And caffeine was in there, but who knows how much caffeine was in it? Right, exactly. If that was all caffeine, they'd be dead. Oh, it yeah, didn't yeah, take yeah. caffeine anhydrous either. It might have been synthetic caffeine it, made in China, you know. But you know, it's that's caffeine. another thing. Yeah. Ours yeah, is exactly. where, where the ingredients are sourced from is huge. Like uh, some people may have the same ingredients, but but they're not sourced from the same place. So the quality of the ingredient is not as good. And the fact that you guys source your ingredients and have quality ingredients, that really says a lot for your company and for what you do. You get what you pay for. I'm not saying, you know. But like that product that that lady was talking about was twenty nine ninety five for sixty capsules, four hundred and fifty three milligram, whatever it was. Right. That yeah. right, there, right there, you're you've got a lot of garbage and fillers going in there because if you've yeah. got a if you could buy quality ingredients, you're gonna see if that you on the price. At the gas station, if you could buy at mm-hmm. the gas station, don't trust it. Well, right. here's the thing. We so your your bottles they come in what 60, 60 caps, is it? Sixty capsules. Yep. Sixty caps, and how much does it cost? Because I remember what was the number. It's forty. Uh, yeah. The original, which we're calling the gold now, is forty nine ninety nine, and the women's because we did add ingredients and there is an additional cost with that. Um, it's fifty four ninety nine. So. So well, here's the thing, guys. So you know, after taxes, whatever, we're talking about a buck a pill, less than yeah. a buck a pill. I mean, yeah, right. you know, it, it's not. It doesn't get much more reasonable than that. I, I you agree. Go to Starbucks. I mean, considering you're only taking one a day, that's that's very, pretty much a two month supply. It's Think about months. it. You would go well, to Starbucks. Supply, plus, you're probably going to take a little bit of a break while you're doing it as well, like cycling it, right? If it's replacing your caffeine in the morning, meaning your coffee, and you're going to Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks, you're spending between four and six bucks yeah. for a cup of coffee anyway. So for a dollar a day, that's your replacement, and it has so many additional beneficial qualities in there. Yes, it does. Yeah. But you're right about the cycling. On the website, I made sure I, I put it under the uh, FAQs. Uh, you don't have to cycle the thermogenics, but you know your body's going to get accustomed to the way you feel when you take them. So say, kind of like weeks, clenbuterol. Yeah, like clenbuterol. You <laughs> yeah. Don't, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I know. Okay. But two to three weeks down the line, you uh, may not. I, I still feel it daily, but you won't get that big oomph like you do when you first start it. Though you're still getting the effects, the positive effects from it, you may not get that big boost like you did when you first started. So just take three to four weeks off, start it back up, and it's going to hit you just like it did day well, one. Well, let me ask you something. Speaking speaking of clombuterol, okay, drugs that work that have a longer half-life or drugs that are just effective in general, um, would some people be able to get maximum benefit from using it like two-on, one-off, two-on, one-off? I, th- I feel like the two-on – or three on one off, three or four on one off, something like that, yeah, like a, that, some, that, some kind of schedule like that, maybe. That might work. Yeah, that could that could possibly work. You know there what? There's different ways of taking them, and I find with this product that they're that they've they've come up with, uh, you can absolutely take it that way. It just depends on the individual. Like for me, I don't want to take a product for three weeks and then take three weeks off or something like that. Right. I would rather do two days on, two days off, three days on, two days off, something like that. Because the three weeks off to me, it's like it's too long being off. I like to right. cycle it in short spurts. I was gonna That's say when, I I those, when you take those three weeks off, you're gonna go, you're gonna go through hell right. because you're gonna <laughs> yeah. get those caffeine withdrawals, the headaches. You're gonna be exhausted like a zombie. You're gonna be like, I have to have my thermo one back, you know? Yeah. See, and, and and I'm not so sure I would I would want to take it like on my on my off day. You know what I mean? Because like sometimes on your off day, you just you just want to chill. You just you don't right. want to be that amped up. You know what I mean? Sure. Maybe that might help with the tolerance. These are good things you're mentioning. I never even thought about that, to be honest with you. Treating it almost like a clenbuterol. I drink my coffee. I mean, if seven, it works. It, it, don't take it every day. <laughs> if, if it works, if it works, you know, I mean, at some point you're going to build a tolerance to it. You're either going to have to increase the dose or you're going to have to take off. I think it's better than having to take off than to find some kind of a, of a, of a dosing schedule like we did with clenbuterol. Yeah. I was part of the reason that two on two off actually came about. I was one of the people that pioneered that. But yeah. as a result of, you know, we were doing uh, the Dexedrine and the uh, the Dimetadrine 25 and the aspirin 
caffeine and aspirin, but that combination. Right. And that combination seemed to last. It, you could take that longer than clenbuterol, and you could get better, you know, results by taking it almost every day versus clenbuterol, where it would kind of like not work as well. So kind right. of like maybe a, a hybrid of the, between the two, where you don't have to go through caffeine withdrawals. That would be a good thing. Yeah, yeah, I agree 100. percent And let's be honest, clenbuterol is not fun. I mean, clenbuterol, you feel sketchy. You feel I don't like, like it. I, I, I don't, don't recommend like it. it, and I don't like it. I'm yes. just, I was just using it as a reference point. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I, like I don't it. think. I don't think that this has anything to do with burning fat, personally. Okay, that's just my opinion. I don't think that. The, I think. I think. I. You look. You and I from the '90s. Okay, Dan Duchesne bought a bunch of clenbuterol from Europe and from Mexico. He wanted to sell it, so he said that it burned fat. So everybody bought it. Believe it or not, that's the same bullshit that today is regurgitated. It really does not burn fat like that. Right. No, it's 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 a bronchodilator. It's an it's an asthma. It's a bronchodilator. Like, if it if yeah. it burned fat like that, they wouldn't be putting it in syrup for children in Europe. Right. Okay. I mean, they they give it to the to kids that are five years old. I mean, come on. This is a lie that Dan Duchesne propagated that basically everybody in the world bought, and people to this day still think that they need clenbuterol to burn fat when in actuality. They don't, and it doesn't really make bit for bit of difference when actually your product burns fat, it does. whereas clenbuterol doesn't. And I think people don't don't they don't understand again. Marketing Dan Duchesne's clever marketing and bodybuilding got people to buy clenbuterol, but they, but it doesn't really work. They they said it works because it makes you shake. So they go, oh, if it shakes, it works. Okay. That yeah. doesn't have any compare. That's that's like saying insulin works because you go hypo. I mean, come on, that's the dumbest comparison. <laughs> yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So, I mean, you actually come up with a product that actually does work. And what we need to do is we don't need fancy marketing. We just need people to know the truth. It works. Yeah. It's a, thus far, it's been all word of mouth and reviews. You know, let's be honest. We don't have massive budgets behind us. And it's it's done really, really well. It's, it's yeah. really tracking well. And um, I think the sky is the future with this. And we're already talking about, you know, new products in the future. So, yeah. Well, you know, pretty much it's let the product speak for itself, right? Correct. I agree with that. I, I think everybody who drinks coffee should try it. I don't I don't see, you know, like if you're already using caffeine on a regular basis, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't try this. This is there's more there's more benefits to this than just coffee. And honestly, you don't even know where your coffee's from half the time. It's really not that great for you. So, I mean, you're getting burnt roasted you know, coffee beans, you, you become accustomed to the taste and, you know, you're addicted to the flavor that is really nasty. Get rid of all that, burn some fat, make yourself feel better and try something that works. It's worth, it's worth the investment. I mean, people, like you said, people spend $4 on a cup of coffee every day. I mean, you know, you're, you're going to get a fr better results from a fraction of that. Yeah. Plus with the, you know, an added benefit with the price of fuel. Now this is going to give you so much energy. You'll run to fucking work. So when I was talking with you guys there, Roger and Sean, um, you know, we, we were discussing the idea of possibly coming up with some sample packets for people to try, because as you guys know, Amin and I, with our team prep stars, we're at bodybuilding competitions or advertising. Yep. We always hand out stuff for free and we'd love to hand out the product for you guys. Um, is that something that you guys still plan on making, um, you know, possible? Absolutely. We've already we've already talked to the lab. Sean's Sean deals with the lab. I wouldn't say on a daily basis, but probably a weekly basis. He's got a very yeah. close connection over there. And you, you, you go ahead, Sean. He's a, he's already he's already talked to them. So yeah, I've already mentioned it to him about yeah doing the sample packs and everything. Now we just got to work on getting the little I don't know the little sachets or whatever they call them. Yeah. Or, little, the little full things pressed wherever well, they well, are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the sachets. Call them what they are. A little cocaine. <laughs> That's what they are. It used to be animal pack. Remember that animal pack. I remember the animal pack. pack. Yeah. 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 Power pack. That's right. That's awesome, guys. And is there any? Uh, you think you're talking about new products that you think you might develop? What do you? What are? What's? What are you guys thinking about? What's on that? What's on the burner there? RTDs for sure. RTDs seem big right now. Ready to drink seem big. So definitely that. Sean had a great idea that I didn't even think of talking about uh, gummies. Gummies are, you know, that's 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 such <laughs> the ease of taking gummies and the popularity of gummies now. So you I, know, I couldn't agree uh, more. So imagine, yeah. yeah, imagine this. So no more dry scoop in your pre-workout. So this won't be a right. this won't be a thermogenic. This is going to be a pre-workout. 
uh, no more dry scooping or making drinks. Yeah, that's gross. Uh, Forget that. Gummies that taste like a Sour Patch Kid. Cute yeah. little orange and little yellow gummies. That's where it's at, man. That's where it's I mean, at. Come on, listen. The, the dry scooping thing is actually dangerous, and you could breathe that in. People, be like, it's very, very dangerous. I don't know. You know, people. I don't know what's wrong with us as human beings that when someone does something idiotic, we all want to repeat it or we all want to see it. You know, it just doesn't. It's it's the way we're wired. You know, it's like it's it's like don't watch that. Let me see that. You know, it's yeah. No, well, you know, like, same with th- these pre-workout drinks. I mean, people are doing the dry scooping. I actually will drink half on the way to the gym and I'll sip it throughout my workout and then I go to water, right? Yes. You know, because otherwise yeah. you're getting it all at once, right? And it'll actually last throughout the workout. I mean, you like to do uh, salt pre-workout. Salt is, I think, the best pre-workout you can use. It is. It is. <laughs> listen, I look, some people, t- listen, some people talk about insulin and sugar and all that crap. I think salt, lemon, and a little bit of honey. Honestly, I think that's better than anything. That's that. But but I mean, if you have, if you if you're, if I take a pre-workout, yeah, it's too strong for me. You yeah. know, I take a fat burner like like the the fin, the fin version. I can handle that. 400 milligrams is a little too much for me because I'm really I don't I I haven't I didn't grow up making myself drink coffee every day. Yeah. You know, I, I drink tea on occasion. So when I take a, a femme fat burner, whoo, man, I feel it. You right. Know? And I think uh, a lot of these pre-workouts, when you do too much caffeine pre-workout, it also has constricting. It actually does the opposite and constricts your blood than, than mm-hmm. you know, opening it up. So it, I think it's, it's not it's not good for you. Right. It's not good for you. Yeah. I think I think the time release or if you could time release the gummy, that would be nice. Yeah, it's a lot of ideas. I'm, you know, brainstorming. The lab, the lab, the lab's been great, man. They, they, they. Not only do we, um, you know, use them, they work with us, man. They, they, they suggest ideas. They, you know, we just revamped our bottles, and a lot of that was to do with the lab suggestion, you know. So, um, yeah, we're uh, we're in talks with them, and Sean, Sean really works hand in hand with them, probably more so than I do. But uh, yeah, we get some, we get some things in the works. Yeah, that's one thing we always get compliments. Our bottles, that are, they stand up from everybody else's. Ours, they're, they're pretty. <laughs> yeah, they look great. Nice. Well, do you think we could show one, uh, show a picture of it on, edit a picture of it? Yeah, I'll put a picture cool. on, yeah. Nice. Do you guys have a bottle there with you right now? or? I don't have one. I can get one. Do you need me to get one? I got one. There he goes. Let the big man handle it. <laughs> I don't think he has any film. You want me to go get a bottle of film? He'll get a bottle of original? Sure. Okay, sure, why not? All right. Yeah, I don't I don't have the fem here. Look, you can get the thermo, oh, the original. Can you see that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I mean, obviously, you know, all of our ingredients are on the back, and they're all broken down per milligram, um, and that's what we think is important for the consumer, you know? So many – I just had, uh, you know, uh, a family member say to me yesterday, oh, I'm already taking, uh, uh, you know, one pill a day, um, you know, thermo thermogenic and uh, i said well what is it she said well it's 453 milligrams of caffeine i said no way there's no way in one pill she said no it's one pill a day and she sent me a picture of the ingredients and it's a it's a proprietary blend on the back of the thing you know it's it's a, it's a it's 453 milligrams of everything combined not caffeine you fucking you yeah. die supplement industry is not regulated and it's part of the reason why there's a big push to regulate it at the same time you know we kind of don't want it regulated but right. it's it's a catch-22 i can't really say what's right or wrong but I, I i do wish that there was third party testing or at least some sort of uh i do agree with you but i think the the consumer needs to educate themselves and they can do their own research you know that has to start first well, well you know so, and, and organic are, reviews are sold on rising and excuse me go ahead rob well, I, uh, you know what, sir, I was just saying, you know what, organic reviews don't lie. When you got people all over the country, you know, talking about this product, I mean, it, I mean, it says something about the product itself, right? Let the product speak for itself. A lot of these sure. companies are scam artists, right? Yeah. With big budgets and can come out with a really cool looking commercial. And they sell big people to because... buy your reviews. <laughs> yeah. So, Sean, let's see the product there. Let's see the Fem version. <laughs> Can you see it right here? Or I... uh, bring it up a little closer for us there. Yeah, we can yeah, see Yeah, purple, it. my favorite color. Yeah. Looks like my lenses. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I like your lenses. Thank you. Yeah, just uh, so we're going with like the metallic. 
label. Looks sharp. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. Show them my favorite part, Sean, on the top of the bottle. Oh, I don't have a flag on that one. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, there, there's a safety seal on it? Well, no, we always put uh, American flags. But when they get shipped out, they get a flag sticker, let you know it's Hell yeah, made in America. Ah, oh, very nice. Damn right. Damn right. We'll have to put right. some with the Canadian flag on it just to throw people off. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh, Sean's, Sean's just going to tape a ma- Sean's just going to tape a maple leaf to the top of you guys. Yeah, there you we go. go. <laughs> what, 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 speaking of what, what's going on, Rob, what's going on in Canada, man? Well, we you don't trust it. I mean, we don't uh, trust the news in America. So what's going on? Yeah, no, I don't know, man. You know what? I stopped watching the news a long time ago. I don't really know what's going on. Um, you know, without getting too deep into it, I think the world is just uh, it's a different place. It's it's unfortunate. But uh, I mean, I don't really know what the future has. But I mean, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. I mean, can, it, can I put it out there? Put it out Does there. Any, put it out there, buddy. I think we're headed towards World War Three. I think so, I'm sorry. I don't. I don't. I don't. I, I, I don't want this to be true. Right. But I'm an intelligent person, and I can see what's going on right now. And, and there's a lot of shit that's added up to all right. the way back to the last election to before that. There's a reason they wanted Trump out. Yes. Look, I don't there, want to get you. You cannot respectful. tell me. You cannot tell me that 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 Hunter Biden and his relationship with China has nothing to do with, 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 with us not doing anything in Ukraine. Come on, man. Russia and China are partners right now. They're partners. That's not good. Who do you think they're, who do you think they're against? They're against us. They're against America. And, and, and let's just be realistic. I mean, I look at, I was born in America. I'm an American. Okay. I know my name is Persian. I'm of Persian descent. I get that. My parents were, my parents, Came here because this is a better place to be. Now, yeah. Iran, China, and Russia, those three are going to join together. And with the fuel that they have, the fuel, guys, the fuel, you have to think about it. You can't move shit without fuel. There's going to be more fuel in those three countries than and ever in the world. And and they're not shame, they're not shy to release a virus. Yeah, they're not shy. They'll fucking release ten more. We don't didn't get me back. started, man. Don't get me started. We didn't, we yeah, didn't buck back. Didn't, no, thing. listen. No, we need we need to say something about it because he can edit this shit out. They no no one ever said, hey, uh, you know, we're gonna do something because this happened. No, we didn't do anything. We just shut our fucking mouths and took a shot. Are you serious? That's how no, no, we're no. supposed to handle this. No, no, Fuck no. that. Some dude. some of us did. Some some, some people us. did. I did. Some some of us did. Yeah. Some of us did. But even you, 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 I saw the agenda. I saw what's going on. There's a partnership with with countries, with the 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 the, the, the family that makes the money, okay, and the pharmaceutical industries. They're all working together right now. There's yeah. there's there's a there's there's a plan they have. They want to erase part of the population. I, I have war. Yeah. war World War Three is a perfect way to do it. The vaccines weren't going to do a good enough job. That everyone yeah, figured that, that shit out. Satisfied. Yeah. Too many. I, mean, I couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, I definitely could not agree with you more. I'm, I'm the biggest patriot you'll ever meet. But uh, you know, I'm kind of learning in marketing that uh, it's a bad move to get political. So I'm not going to get too political here on this. Yeah. Oh, we can. I'm definitely on board. I'm on board with what you said. But I would just simplify it and say this. What's going on right now is biblical. This is good versus evil. Right? I was, thank you, Roger. This is, this is thank you, Roger. laid out for us. Thank no you, Roger. Think about it. This thank is you, Roger. Good. Yeah. And I know where I stand. I know where I stand. Edit, edit I, know this I, stand. I don't know if you two gentlemen, I know Sean has two boys. I don't know if you three boys. I'm sorry. Um, I don't know if you guys have children, but I have children. And I'm, I do. I'm not worried about me because I'll, pu- I'll dig my fucking boots in the sand and I'll, I'll take a stand when it's time. I will take that stand. I'm I'm scared for my children. I'm scared for my children's future, you know? Yeah. 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 No, hey, you listen. know what? Well, that's like when we were talking there, Roger and Sean, last time we were doing our FaceTime shot, I was saying, hey, you know what? I'm I'm concerned for my son. Like, what what's the world gonna be like? You know, and, right. and I just don't really know, and I think that's scary. But um, but yeah, getting back to Amin's uh, OnlyFans, um, what's your OnlyFans <laughs> account in there? Um 
What was it, the, the Persian <laughs> pauper, or what was it? The, the first, the don't, first, don't get me started, man. There might be something out there already. I might have to start using it. You never know. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah. I say to Mike. I, I, I found out what OnlyFans was like four months ago. I didn't even know what it was until four months ago. One of my clients so told me I'm going to look good for OnlyFans. You know I, what I, those girls make? Those girls make I, n- now I do, yeah. You know that, that, that catch me outside chick from Dr. Phil? She started an OnlyFans with the day she turned 18. She turned 18 years old. She started an OnlyFans. One day she made a million dollars. Yeah. That's fucking crazy. Can't I can't even. I mean, I can't <laughs> we, we, gotta be, we gotta be able to make some money here, hey? I no. listen, I've I've heard they'll buy dirty underwear. You know, I've got I, I don't have to wash my clothes. I can mail it to people if they want. That's no yeah. problem. You know, you want to if if well, I'll start an OnlyFans account. Yeah. It'll have to be the Persian guru. That's what it'll be. The, yeah. And well, nobody put, better put take that goddamn description God damn it. there for that one, hey? <laughs> link in the description if you want some dirty underwear. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> but I might I might send you someone else's. I might send you Rob's instead. You might you might notice if the waist isn't actually uh, 30 inches or less. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, guys, you know what? Uh, you know what? It was a pleasure having you guys on our show here. Um, you know what? Everyone, like I said, take a look at the description if you guys want to get in touch with Team Prep Stars or the Thermal One guys. Um, you know, their Instagram, their website will be posted. Uh, we'd love to do this again with you guys. So, absolutely. Enjoy it. We already know each other, Rob, but I mean, it was a pleasure to meet you, brother. Yeah, it's pleasure amazing. meeting you, man. I'm glad well, to know where you guys thank. stand. The thanking. Listen, it's 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 going to be guys like us, all of us right here. We 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 want. Listen, don't believe in the narrative. They want you. They want you not to speak. They right. want you not to speak. I've kept my mouth shut because I know there's going to be a time where I need to speak and I won't be silenced because I, I I've kept my mouth shut for so long. I know where you guys stand. I'm glad. I feel I feel you. But but listen. Don't let don't believe the narrative. They want you to think that you can't speak because they want others to bite their tongue. You don't even have to say it to me, bro. My my bug out bag is packed. And when the shit hits a fan, I'll see you on that line, brother. I'll see you there. I'll be on that line with you, man. And, right. and we'll have we'll have God on our side. That's absolutely what it right there. 